the power of co- of covenant yani nguvu za maagano na wacha nikwambie in this kingdom because we are in the kingdom of god ah uh, the kingdom of god has some covenants na ni vizuri kuelewa maagano sababu unapoelewa maagano maisha yako yanabadilika bwana sifiwe mtu ambaye hajui maagano uh, anakuwa bega kwa ufalme wao bwana sifiwe na mtu ambaye hajui maagano ya Mungu na wanae pia kuna mambo ambao utakuwa unaumia lakini kama vile tuliona ujumbe ule tuliona mwisho ya kuwa kama mtu bado ni mtoto ulithi wake unakaa na watenda kazi bwana sifiwe kwa hivyo naomba katika jina la Yesu ya kuwa baada ya message ya siku ya leo uh, you are approach in this kingdom will change because you know you have been powered by covenant bwana sifiwe unajua kuna watu wakati wa kona faction wanasema powered by safaricom powered by kcb we are powered by the covenant of god bwana sifiwe na wacha nikwambie kwa maagano maagano inapatia mtu kufu na maagano hutetea mtu bwana sifiwe nataka tusome katika kitabu cha first samuel first samuel chapter 18 samueli wa kwanza 18 nasoma mstari wa 3 na wa 4 e, biblia inasema and jonathan made a solemn pact with david because he loved him as he loved himself jonathan sealed the pact by the his rope and giving it to david together with his tunic sword bow and belt bwana sifiwe ah uh, hapo tunaonyeshwa na neno la mungu maagano ambayo yalifanywa na daudi na jonathan na maagano hayo yalikuwa powered na upendo biblia inasema sababu jonathan alimpenda Daudi sana akafanya maagano na yeye na wakati alifanya maagano na yeye eh Biblia inasema Solomon ama ni maagano unaweza sema maagano matakatifu bwana sifiwe na alipofanya hiyo maagano wakati mtu huwa anafanya maagano lazima kuwe kuna mambo huwa inabadilika bwana sifiwe Hakuna maagano huwa inafanywa na kusikwe kuna kitu kimetoka kwa mtu mmoja na kiende kwa mtu mwingine. Bwana sifiwe. So tunaambiwa yeye alitoa mavazi yake akapatia Daudi. Akachukua upanga ambao walikuwa napigana nao akapatia Daudi. Akachukua uta wake ambao walikuwa naenda nao vita akapatia Daudi. Bwana sifiwe na uh, Biblia inasema kutoka siku hiyo wakawa wanatembea pamoja na tutaona vile hii maagano ni kitu kidogo tu kime happen hapo lakini tutaona vile ilikuja kusaidia baadaye bwana sifiwe sababu hii maagano imefanywa na hawa watu wawili na wamekubaliana kuwa wako pamoja na wamebadilishana vitu bwana sifiwe sasa tutaona hebu tuende katika kitabu cha second samuel second samuel chapter 9 second samuel chapter 9 tutasoma hapo kuanzia mstari wa kwanza haya inasema one day david asked Is anyone of Saul's family still alive? Anyone whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Siba who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Siba the king asked? Yes, he replied. Together up of our six, our six the same 
the same chapter, verse 6. Hallelujah. 6 in Asema, his name is Mediposhet. He, he was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground. In deep respect, he said greetings. David said, greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Do not be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. More Mephibosheth bowed down respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to, to a dead dog like me? Bwana sifiwe. Sasa tunaona, baada ya maagano kufanywa, kuna siku ilifika na ikawa familia yote ya Saul inamalizwa. Lakini sababu kulikuwa na maagano, Biblia inasema Daudi siku moja akauliza, kuna mmoja amebaki. Sababu kuna maagano tumefanya, at least hiyo maagano ihifadhi mtu mmoja wa kutoka kwa Saul. Na ukisoma hapo nikuruka nimeruka sababu ya time. Utapata wale waliamiwa watafuta mtu kama huyo walileta mambo mingi sana ya kuonyesha this man does not qualify to be honored by the king wakaelezea mpaka mambo ambao hakuulizwa Daudi aliuliza just a simple question kuna mtu amebaki katika nyumba ya Sauli ni muonyeshe mema sababu ya maagano Daudi hakuuliza kama kuna mtu kiwete Daudi hakuuliza kama kuna mtu wajiwezi yeye aliuliza kama kuna mtu Bwana asifiwe. Na neno la Mungu linasema Ziba akajaribu kusema kuna mtu ambaye ni kibete hapo alifikiria uwete uta disqualify maagano. Na mimi mwacha ni kuambia mpendo ha. Kuna wakati na sisi tumewekwa maagano kwa maagano ya damu ya Yesu. Watu wageulizwa, wagesema haufai kuoshwa na damu ya Yesu. Wagepeana liso ni yale mambo ushawahi kufanya. Wagepeana liso ni ya familia yenu iishe. Lakini wacha nikwambie, Biblia inasema kuna damu inanena mema kuliko damu ya Abel. Ya Abel inasema rifech. Lakini kuna inanena mema. Daudi alikuwa na all resources ya kumaliza nyumba ya Sauli. Lakini kuna maagano ya likuwa ya nanena kinyume Mpendwa It may be you qualified to die Maybe you qualified to be judged Lakini siku ya leo na kuletea kuna maagano mapia Abayo anasema kwa file mungu walipenda ulimwengu Akatoa mwanae wapeke Niposa atakae muamini ya sife Bari akue na uzima wa mirere Mpendo haijalishi how you are past was When you come to this covenant Nimekwabia kwa covenant Kuna mtu mmoja huwa natoa vitu Dio sinahama kwa kezi naeda kwa mwingine Na wakati mungu alitaka kufanya maagano na mwanadamu Na yeye pia vile tunaona Ya kuwa chono dhani alitoa mavazi yake Akatoa upaka wake Akatoa uta wake Ata mungu hakuja kwa maagano mikono mitupu Alikuja kwa maagano na mwanae wapeke Akasema ni na mtoa huyu mwana wangu Sababu bibiria inasema Yule mtu wamefanya dhani anafaa kifo Unajua Mutu wapaya amejachiwa to die Hata kama ako hai Amekufa Mwana sifiwe Mutu wapaya amepelekwa kotini Na chaji amesema Hang this man 
Mchaji akimwangalia kutoka hiyo ruling anaonaga mtu ambaye amekufa. Watu wataona mtu ambaye anatolewa apelekwe SM akakae ni anyongwe lakini kwa macho ya chaji amekufa. Na sisi wapendwa mtu ambaye hajapeana maisha yake kwa Kristo hata kama ako hai Biblia inasema amekufa. Tutaona vazi zingine zinasema na sisi tulikuwa tumekufa katika dhambi. Mpendwa unaweza kuwa hai lakini your case is gone. Lakini wacha nikwambie nyumba ya nyumba ya Sauli ilikuwa imalizwe yote. Hata kama kuna wengine kama Simba walikuwa hai ni kama walikuwa wamekufa because ilikuwa mtu wa Sauli yule nyumba yake ikipatikana anauawa. Lakini kuna maagano ilikuwa inasema there is an exemption. I'm telling you in Jesus name kuna exemption wakati unakuja kwa maagano ya Kristo Yesu. Wakati unaingia kwa damu ya Yesu yale mambo yote ambayo yalikuwa yakufanikie yanabadilishwa. Mahali ulikuwa hauwezi toshea sababu ya dhambi zako, sababu ya jamii yako. Damu ya Yesu unapokutana nayo inasema huyu amekubalika mbele za baba. Zima alikuwa anafikiria sababu medhiposedi ni kiwete hawezi kanyaga mbele ya mfalme kile alishangani kuwa sio kukanyaga tu mbele ya mfalme bali maagano yanasema akule katika meza ya mfalme Mpendo wa sichui umekuwa disqualified wapi lakini wherever men has disqualified disqualified you there is a covenant ambayo Mungu alijitolea mwanae wa pekee akasema natoa huyu mwana niposa atakaye muamini asife akuwe na uhai na sio uhai peke yake ni uhai tere jamii yako ikuwe na uhai ah kile unafanya na mikono yako kiwe na uhai mwili wako ukue na uhai kila kitu unaguza wewe hauna uhai tu uko na uhai tere tere na wacha nikwambie mpendwa maagano huwa yanaongea yanasema huyo kama kuna ingine ilikuwa imetengenezwa baadaye inasema huyo hafai kuishi bwana asipiwe lakini wacha nikwambie nguvu ya maagano inalingana ni nani anayofanya the position ya yule anafanya maagano ndio inatitamini hiyo maagano iko na nguvu namna gani maagano ya nchi ya Kenya inaitwa the constitution of Kenya na hata kama department zingine Ministry of Agriculture, County Councils zote zimeruhusiwa kutengeneza sheria lakini inaambiwa sheria ambayo inakuja against the Constitution of Kenya is null and void. Mpendwa, kuna kuna agano nyingi mtu anaweza fanya huku chini. Lakini ukikutana na agano, nguvu ya agano ina depend na yule anaifanya. Na ninashukuru Mungu aliye hai sababu hakuna mtu mwingine ako juu ya Mungu. God is final. When he makes a covenant, all the other covenants they are junior compared to the covenant of God. So haijalishi maagano yalifanywa na nani. When you come into contact with the covenant that is made by God, all the other covenants they are null and void. Na ndio Biblia inasema hakuna hukumu tena kwa wale wako katika Kristo Yesu. Inawezekana kuna maagano imefanywa kwingine. Lakini hiyo nguvu ya maagano, hiyo maagano inanyipa nguvu sababu hii maagano tuko nayo ndio superior made by God himself through his son Jesus. Nataka uone vile maagano yalikuchia medhibo fsed hata baada ya kukalishwa kwa meza ya mfalme kuna maagano ingine kidogo kidogo ilikuwa inafanywa hapo inasema huyo jamaa hawai kukaa kwa hiyo meza anafaa afe lakini kile hawakuchua ni sababu hakuchua because David
Fred is the king. He has an exemption to say who you are good. Na wewe inawezekana kuna watu wana haki ya kuclaim kitu kwa maisha yako lakini kitu hawachui because God is final he has exempted you by the blood of Jesus you are exempted mahali cha mii yenu ilikuwa ikuve mapema you have been exempted mahali cha mii yenu ilikuwa ifilisike you have been exempted mahali cha mii yenu unasikiaga daktari anaenda anasema kuna mtu mhojwa mhojwa kama huu kwa familia yenu ukisikia daktari anaongea hivyo unakumbuka umekutana na maagano ya Yesu inayosema there is an exemption inawezekana hii ugojwa iko kwa jamii yetu but when it comes to me there is an exemption because there is a spirit of covenant that God has made with man through his son Jesus Waje some tuone vile medipo said alikujiwa na tuagano tuingine hapo katika Samuel Samuel chapter 2 21 tutaanze ni fasile tunataka ni 7 lakini wacha tuanzie moja Second Samuel 21 from verse 1 Inasema there was famine in the land during David's reign that lasted for three years so David asked the Lord about it and the Lord said the famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites wakati Joshua alikuwa napeleka wana wa Israeli Kanani kuna jamaa walichukua mikate imeoza wakavaa mavazi ambayo imeoza wakaenda wakaambia Joshua ametoka nchi ya Bali na kwao kuna mashida Joshua sababu ya huruma akawachukua na akawahifadhi na akawaahibi ya kuwa tukienda kwa nchi yenu hatutawaguza mtakaa ndani ya wana wa Israeli na hakuna mtu atawaguza sasa na yeye Saul amekucha ameanza kuua wa Gibeoni na sababu kulikuwa na maagano imefanywa na Joshua. Biblia inasema kukawa na miaka tatu hakunyeshi. Kukawa na jaa. Daudi alipoenda akauliza Mungu kwa nini tunapitia haya? Mungu akasema hii inapitiwa sababu kuna agano ilifanywa na wana wa Israeli na wa Gibeoni lakini Saul ameifuta. Sasa Daudi ameambiwa ni wa Gibeoni Wacha tusikie Daudi vile alifanya. So the king summoned the Gibeonites. They were not part of Israel, but all that was left of the nation of the Ammonites. The people of Israel sought not to kill them, but Saul in his zeal for Israel and Judah had tried to wipe them out David asked them what can i do for you how can i make a med so that you will bless the lord's people again daudi anawaita anawauliza ni nini naweza wafanyia ndio muweze kubariki israeli ndio mungu aweze kuleta mvua wacha usikie jibu ile walipeana Well, man cannot settle this matter between us and the, power, and the, and the family of Saul. Kitu ya kwanza wakasema, we mfalme hakuna pesa inaweza kufanya tusahau tusahau vile Saul alifanya. Kwa hivyo pesa haziwezi lipa. Hallelujah. Kuna mambo huwa yanadaiwa kwa maisha yako. Na wacha nikwambie Shetani hawezi itisha pesa. Bwana asifiwe. Wakati mambo yamekuja kudaiwa kwa maisha yako, hakuna pesa unaweza toa ndio adui anyamaze. Unajua siku hizi tunahubiriwa tunaambiwa ukitoa pesa kwa madhabahu itanyamazisha mambo mengine sio yote. Ambie mwanzo si yote. Kuna 
wakati ya dui anasemaga hata pesa sita staki bwana sifiwe so wakimbioni wanasema pesa hatutaki kitu ya pili wanasema aje neither can we demand the right of anyone in israel wanasema na hatutaki uhai mwingine wa mtu mwingine wa israel uhai wanamaanisha hawawezi kubali wanyama hawawezi kubali watu wengine wa uwawe wanataka tu familia ya nani ya saul wacha nikwambie mpendwa kuna wakati mambo huwa yanainuka na naadui anajishikiria anasema hakuna kitu kingine nataka sitaki familia ingine nataka ile ya fulani anasema wanyama hata wachijwe si nyamazi nataka familia hiyo hata waambiwa atolewe mtu mwingine wanasema hapana hatutaki mwingine tunataka yule yule tu bwana sifiwe haleluya sasa daudi anauliza what do i do then just just tell me i'll do it for you daudi anaambia wa gibioni sasa niwafanyie nini hamtaki pesa hamtaki uhai mwingine wowote mnataka nini ndio mtusamehe muweze kutubariki first time we nasema then they replied it was Saul who planned to destroy us to keep us from having any place in the territory of Israel so let seven of Saul's son be handed over to us and we will execute them before the Lord at Gibeon on the mountain of the Lord wanasema tupewe watu wa saba wa Sauli na ukumbuke familia ya Sauli ilikuwa imeuawa sana kwa hiyo kupata watu saba he he bwana sifiwe na sababu alikuwa na chupa medipose si wamekuja kwa mfalme walikuwa naona medipose kwa meza wanasema we already have one tumebakisha sita bwana sifiwe wanasema Sauli ndiye alikuwa anatupiga tunataka watu wa jumba ya Sauli wakufe Sijui kama ni vile mambo mengine iliacho hapa kingine walikuwa shaanza kusema si yule ni mmoja Kuna wakati inafika Shetani anaona kama amepweka kwa kabox Anaona ako na cream ya familia yenu na wewe Lakini wacha nikwambie in a covenant there is exemption Bwana sifiwe haijalishi mpango wake uko namna gani Hawa watu unasikia wakikile mna mna hii waliingia kwa Israeli kwa uo, kwa uongo walikuwa pati ya adui ya wana Israeli lakini wakaelewa uwezo wa maagano hata kama walitumia uongo unaona waagae maagano inawalinda wanasema tunataka tupewe yani wanaitisha the children of the former king wa Israel na wenyewe waliingia Israeli kwa uoga wali take advantage ya uwezo wa maagano mpendwa usipochua nguvu ya maagano unaweza tekiwa advantage na mwovu bwana sifiwe unaona even the whole king of israel hana uwezo amefukwa na maagano ameenda kwa mungu amesema ameambiwa ameambiwa na mungu mmekosea wa bingibioni enda uongee na wao Bwana sifiwe. Sasa wanasema tupatie watu saba. Wanasema kwanza tutawanyonga mbele za Bwana na kwa mlima wa Bwana. Na unajua Biblia inasema shetani is the accuser of brethren. Anateta mbele za Bwana akionyesha vile uko na haki ya kumalizwa. Vile uko na haki ya biashara yako isisimame. Vile uko na haki usisimame. Walikuwa naona mailipo sedu wanasema kale tutaanza nayo. Lakini hawakujua. Hiyo maagano walikuwa natumia iwatetee 
kuna mwingine alikuwa amefanya maagano na mfalme mpendwa hata kama shetani ameshikilia maagano ya kitambo with the new covenant you will stand in Jesus name bwana alitabiri akasema i'm making a new covenant with men ah adui anaweza kuwa ameshikilia the old test the old covenant akitafuta maisha yako akitafuta jamii yako akitafuta afya yako kile hachui kuna mengine mapya ah na hurumia wale hawajaingia kwa maagano mapya sababu maagano mzee itawatesa maagano mzee itakrem maisha yao maagano mzee itasema tutawanyonga walifanya makosa hiyo ni maagano mzee inaokea lakini kuna maagano mapya siku ya leo na hurumia wale wanaacha maagano mapya wanarudi kwa maagano ile mzee ambayo ilifanywa na babu zetu wanarudia hiyo ya kumaliza watu realize new covenant my people realize new covenant that says there is an exception haijalizi mababu walituuza wapi haijalizi mababu walifanya nini lakini wakati shetani anakuja with the old covenant yule anapatikana kwa hii mpya anapewa exemption anaboneza claim hiyo jamii yote lakini sio huyu huyu amefanya maagano mapya huyu amezalika kwa jamii nyingine biblia inasema tumezaliwa kwa jamii ya Mungu sio nini nani huyo ambaye uko na boldness enough ya kukrem chochote kwa mtu wako kwa jamii ya Bwana mpendwa kuna maagano huyo anasema this one is exempted Bwana asifiwe Mataja tusome verse 7 Haya Tumefika hapo 5 Baba anasema wakipioni wataua mtu juu ya mlima wa Bwana Daudi anasema all right the king said I will do it The king spared Jonathan son Medipo said who was Saul's grandson because of the covenant David and Jonathan had sown before the Lord David spared Medipo said the grandson of Saul why because of the covenant mpendwa kunaweza kuwa tuko na haki ya kufa lakini we are exempted by the blood of Jesus we are exempted by the new covenant inawezekana kuna mambo ya jamii yetu yako na haki ya kutufuata tunafaa kuwa na consequences ya kile kilifanywa na wazee wetu wale walio tutangulia lakini we are the exemption ah sasa alifichwa na maagano na imagine hii ni maagano ya mwanadamu na mwanadamu what about maagano ya Mungu na mwanadamu kama ya mwanadamu na mwanadamu yanasema mezipo sasa hakufi imagine mezipo sasa baya alikuwa kiwete yeye ndiye alihifadhiwa na maagano watu walikuwa wazima na wako na nguvu ya mwili wakaajiriwa waende inawezekana ulikuwa na unyonge ukikuja kwa bwana unyonge wako hauko tena ni maagano yanaongea inawezekana watu wanaweza kukuweza useless medipe sel medipo seda akihesabiwa useless ambiwe huyu ni kiwete hawezi saidia sana wacha huyu auawe tuachwe na wale wako na afya lakini maagano yalikuwa yanasema huyu ndiye kompita huyu ndiye wa kuhifadhiwa huyu ndiye wa kufichwa ah mpendwa kuna maagano siku ya leo haijalishi unyonge uliokuja nao katika ufalme wa Bwana siku ya leo ni maagano yanaongea kuna mahali nguvu za mwili asiongei kuna mahali pesa yako haiongei kuna mahali kile wale unachuana na wao hawezi kukusaidia ni maagano yanaongea lakini Daudi akahifadhi Mephibosheth kwa sababu ya maagano Ah, una 
haipaliwa siku ya leo mahali jamii yenu haipiti utapita sababu ya maagano ya damu ya Yesu mahali watu wenu alizuiwa utai Simiachi hata siku moja Biblia inasema na as many as are led by the spirit they are the sons of God Ni ukae kwa hii maagano ni lazima uongozwe na roho wa Bwana ni lazima ukae ndani ya roho wa Bwana hii maagano mapya nasema ni lazima ukue na roho wa Bwana Kwa hivyo Isaia inasema hivi And this is my covenant with them says the Lord. My spirit will not leave them. And neither will these words I have given you. They will be on your lips and the lips of your children and your children children forever. I the Lord has spoken. Sio roho tu Bwana ametupatia. Biblia inasema ameweka neno lake katika mdomo wetu na ndipo sawa na kuambia mpendwa angalia vile unaongea na mdomo wako mdomo wako umewekwa maagano na Bwana wakati unaongea kinyume na maisha yako unajirani sababu huo mko mdomo wako sio mdomo kama wa wengine mdomo wako uko na maagano na Bwana ameweka maneno yake katika lips zako every time you speak Unaongea nini kuhusu watoto wako? Unaongea nini kuhusu jamii yako? Kuwa unajua mpendwa kutoka siku ya leo, roho wa Bwana anakaa ndani yako na mdomo wako uko na maagano. Ukisema siwezi hautaweza. Ukisema ninaisha unaisha. Kwa sababu gani? Mdomo wako uko na maagano. Anza kujitabiria mema. Anza kuogea positive katika Jina la Yesu Biblia inasema in the beginning the earth was formless ah lakini Bwana akanena akasema let there be inawezekana kuna mambo kwa maisha yako ambayo yanaonekana hayana maana ambayo yanaonekana yameharibika siku ya leo wa mpendwa uko na maagano kwa mdomo wako kile unaumba ndio unatumia na Biblia inasema those that love their tongue They shall eat the fruits of their mouth. Mdomo wako uko na maagano. Unanena nini kuhusu bwanako? Unanena nini kuhusu watoto wako? Unanena nini kuhusu biashara yako? Mdomo wako uko na maagano mpendwa. Don't misuse water because whatever you speak is a covenant. Mungu anasema nimeweka maneno yangu katika mdomo wako. Kile unasema itahappen. Na ndio Biblia inasema utapata walio chini na utasema wainuke na watainuliwa. Kwa nini? Sababu mdomo wako uko na maagano. Biblia inasema kile utafunga duniani, nitakivuga mikuni. Kwa nini? Sababu mdomo wako uko na maagano. Unatumia mdomo wako namna gani? Hii mdomo iko na maagano ya kiungu. Unaongea nini kuhusu afya yako? Unasema niko na kaugojwa yako. Hii kaugojwa ni ya familia yetu. Wacha nikwambie mpendwa, ukishajiingiza kwa agano usifikirie pasta atakuja kufuja. Ni wewe umejiweka kwa hiyo agano. How are you using your mouth? Mdomo wako unautumia namna gani? Ndani yako kuna roho wa Bwana na Mungu ameweka maneno katika mdomo wako. Ongea vile Mungu anataka sio vile hali iko. Ah, ongea vile Mungu anataka sio vile hali iko. Nenea watoto wako useme watoto wangu kama vile neno la Bwana linasema na watoto wangu watakuwa wa ishara na miujiza sio kusema hawa watoto ni useless hawa watoto sijui anaweza saidia nani speak what god is speaking bwana sifiwe the bible says because he lives our face tomorrow sio kusema mimi kesho sijui kama nitaishi ongea vizuri maneno yako yamewekwa covenant na mungu bwana sifiwe haleluya Haijalishi ni nini unaona? 
tulikuwa na tumeenda pale kanisani na wapendwa wengine na wapia hii kanisa ni dogo sana bwana niambia pasta ni kubwa na wapia hii ni dogo hatuwezi tuja hapa kwa sababu maneno yangu iko na agano bwana sifiwe kuna ujumbe nilihubiri siku moja nikasema mahali mfuko wako hawezi fika wacha mdomo wako ufike bwana sifiwe kama mfuko wako unaweza fungua kiosk mdomo wako unaweza fungua supermarket because your mouth has covenant bwana sifiwe usitoe kuogeaga kile unaona dunia ilikuwa formless lakini mungu hakuogea formlessness alisema let there be inawezekana mzee wako ama bibi yako ukimwangalia unaona sasa hakuna kitu anakusaidia na yeye na na maisha yako lakini unaweza badilisha uanze kujenga kile unataka unasema huyu mzee neno maana huyu mzee anaenda bali sababu unachua kile unaongea kinaupika the earth was formless but god said let there be light ni nini unaongea mdomo wako uko na maagano Bwana asifiwe twende first peter first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 haleluya first peter chapter 2 24 24 inasema he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right by his wounds we are healed bwana sifiwe yani yesu kwa hii agano alibeba dhambi zetu akazipeleka msalabani ndio tufe katika dhambi na tuishi katika roho bwana asifiwe na biblia inasema kwa mapigo yake tumepokea uponyaji katika hii maagano kuna mapigo yesu alipigwa ndio tupone haijalishi uhojo unajiita nani haujalishi ulianza na nani kwa familia yetu ah hii maagano inasema kwa mapigo ya yesu tumepokea uponyaji tumekufa katika dhambi ukiwa na dhambi sinataka kuinuka kwa maisha yako unazinenea unaambia huu mwili umekufa katika dhambi na uko hai katika Kristo sababu hii ndio maana mpya bwana sifiwe haleluya tusome Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3 Hallelujah Colossians chapter 3 Oh sorry chapter 2 verse 13 Chapter 2 verse 13 The Bible inasema you are dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away then god made you alive with christ for he forgave all your sins he canceled the record of the charges against us and took away took it away nailing it on the cross in this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authority He has shamed them publicly by his victory. Bwana sifiwe. Neno la Bwana linasema tulikuwa tumekufa katika dhambi. Lakini Yesu ametufanya hai. Na sio kutufanya hai tu. Biblia inasema amefutilia bali rekodi yote ya maofu tuliyofanya. Bwana sifiwe. Maagano kama vile tumefanya tumeona wakipioni walikuwa naona Mephibosheth kile hawakuwa wanachua Mephibosheth hakuwa kama wana wengine wa Sauli 
Rekodi yake yote ya maofu ilikuwa imeondolewa. Wakati wanasema wana wa Isra wana wa Saul wakufe, maagano ilikuwa inasema mediposeli aishi. Na wewe mpendwa inaweza kuwa ulikuwa umefanya maofu, inaweza kuwa ulikuwa umefanya chukisho, lakini Biblia inasema ni kweli due to our sin nature we were dead in sin, but Christ has made us alive and he has canceled the record. Ambia mwenzako, record yako imekansoliwa. Hata wakikuja na the old covenant ya kusema huyu alifanya kitu hawajui ili kansoliwa wako nayo ni kweli lakini kwa Mungu ni cancelled walikuja bondeo wakisema watu saba wafe katika nyumba ya Sauli na wakajua sababu kuna mmoja anakaa kwa meza ya mfalme wale wanatafutwa ni sita walishagaa yeye aliachwa wakatafutwa wengine saba ambao wako covered na covenant kuna mambo inaweza kucha hata ikuje kwa jamii ama ikuje Kenya ama ikuje kwa kwa kwa, kwa tribe yenu lakini ikifika kwako you are exempted it has been cancelled all the records of evil Yesu alipokufa msalabani Biblia inasema alipigilia msalabani aliaibisha farme na principalities silikuwa ni samda ah imagine walikuwa wanakuja kuua lakini kuna mtu mmoja alikuwa hangekufa mediposet sababu ya maagano when it comes to mediposet they were disarmed na sisi Biblia inasema Yesu ali disarm everything that was working against us it was disarmed na ikapigiliwa kwa msako msalaba wa Yesu Kristo na ndio Biblia inasema now let us approach Bodre the seat of the most high because we have been made righteous through the blood of Jesus righteousness means tumekubalika mbele za Bwana ah mpendwa inawezekana huko kwa mtaa unakataliwa lakini mbele za Bwana umekubalika Ah unaweza simama mbele ya Mungu wa Biku na Ichi umekubalika kitabaya hekalu ililaruka wakati Yesu alimwona damu yule yoyote anaosha kwa hiyo damu anaweza simama mbele ya Mungu wa Biku na Ichi Bwana asifiwe and principalities have been disarmed hakuna principality inaweza kuniona hata wakati inakuja kabisa inasimama kwa jamii yenu ina claim ni lazima kiapeni hivi ikifika kwako iko disarmed because we are in the new covenant mpendwa elewa uko kwa maagano mpya sio ile ya kitambo hadi mtu yeyote akikuja na hapo ana claim chochote kinatokea kwa maisha yako no 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 there is this arming of principalities through what Jesus did on this on his cross and this is what we call the new covenant tuko kwa maagano mapya wakati wanakuja ku claim maisha yako unawaambia ni kweli hiyo mambo yote mnasema ni kweli mediposed alikuwa nakaa kwa meza ya mfalme anasema ni kweli babu yangu alikuwa na uwa wa kibioni ni kweli wako na haki ya kuwa mtu kwa jamii yetu ni kweli lakini maagano yanasema mimi nitaishi Daudi alisema nitaishi na nitakaa hapa mbele ya mfalme ah walikuwa na shindwa mtu ambaye babu yao walikuwa na waua ni nini anafanya kwa meza ya mfalme kuna watu wanachanganyikiwa what are you doing in the presence of god they disqualified you in your village they disqualified you wherever you went but the covenant is saying uh, you are staying in the table Biblia inasema alipokufa aliinuka akafufuka akatuinua pamoja wakati aliinuka juu alienda na sisi and we are seated together with him in the heavenly realm wacha watu wachanganyikiwe ni nini unafanya kwa meza ya Bwana lakini ni maagano ya okay hata usijaribu kuachibu maagano ya naongea Melibo 
Joseph ya kuongea chochote ni maagano yalikuwa yanasema ueni wengine wote lakini sio huyu useni wengine wote lakini sio huyu mpendwa you have been exempted in Jesus name Hallelujah sio kila upepo unakubeba sio kila mtu anakudai atakupata angekupata kitambo lakini kwa sababu umefufuka katika Kristo Yesu uko kwa maagano hawezi kukugusa bora uelewe ni maagano yanaongea na ndio Biblia inasema it's not by papa it's not by might sio kwa matendo yako ati umefanyika haki bali ni kwa neema ya Bwana Haleluya Let us read the last verse katika kitabu cha Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 Hallelujah we thank Jesus. Ha we are in the new covenant katika jina la Yesu. Mahali adui hawezi akatupata. Ah the accusations with the old record that was cancelled by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Chapter 2 tunasoma verse 1 na tuende chapter 2 verse 5. Inasema once you are dead because of your disobedience and your many sins you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world obeying the devil inasema kuna siku tulikuwa tuna tumekufa tunaishi katika dhambi na inasema siku hiyo tulifanya kama dunia mzima kuobe shetani unajua ukisema hivyo watu wanaona kama unajipendelea Bwana sifiwe. Dunia yote inaombea shetani. Wale hawajapeana maisha yao, waoshwe na damu ya Yesu. Biblia inasema hata sisi tulikuwa hivyo. Tulikuwa tunatii shetani. Akiongea tunasema Yesa. Lakini tuko kwa maagano mpya. Biblia inasema The commander of the powers in the unseen world. Kwa hivyo shetani anakomandi watu. Usipojificha kwa hii maagano mpya, huna otherwise Biblia inasema yeye ni commander. Ana command unseen world. Bwana asifiwe. Hiyo ulimwengu haionekani. Kama hauko kwa maagano ya mwana wa Mungu. Ah upende usipende, utafanya vile anasema. Ukienda uongee na watu ambao wanalewa wanakuambia pasta sitakagi kukunywa unamwambia kuna wakati tulikuwa na kanisa makogeni kijana mmoja akanikutia akaniambia pasta mimi nataka unisaidie niache ulevi nikamwambia kuna Yesu mwana wa Mungu ambaye huwa anatoa watu kwa ulevi akaniambia usiniambie mambo ya Yesu huyo amezaliwa na mwanamke kama mimi nikamwambia mpendwa na mimi sina methodi nyingine Method ni covenant mpya unless you this covenant there is commander of an sin world akikomandi unafanya akisema ufanye usherati utafanya akisema hata kama umeolewa ulale na bwana wa mtu wa mwanamke wa mtu utafanya sababu kuna commander katika an sin world yule tu hawezi command ni mtu wako katika maagano mapya bwana asifiwe kwa kama unaona unafanya mambo upendi angalia ni nani anakukomand. Huyu ni komanda akisema lazima ifanywe. Yule mtu tu hawezi komand ni mtu ameoshwa na akatakazwa na damu ya Yesu na akawekwa kwa maagano mapya. Bwana asifiwe. Biblia inasema he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Anasema kana huyu ni roho, yule anafanya kazi kwa wale watu wataki utii Mungu. Mungu kuna watu wengi watii Mungu, unajua mtu anasema mimi si hui, mimi sifanyi nini? Kutotii Mungu ni Mungu anasema mkubali kazi aliyofanya msalabani na unakataa. Mungu anasema nipatie maisha yako, nifanye nayo vile ninataka unakataa. Hiyo kukataa 
ndio kunaitwa kutotii Mungu na usipotii Mungu Biblia inasema kuna roho anakaa ndani yako na huo roho ndiye inakuwa komande ninaambiwa mpeleke kwa usharati anaenda kwa usharati mpeleke wapi mtoe kwa ndoa yake anatolewa sababu ukikataa Mungu huwezi kukataa huyu komanda of unseen world bwana sifiwe fasdri nasema all of us used to live that way following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature anasema sisi sote tulikuwa hivyo tukifuata matamanio ya mili yetu tukitafuata matamanio ya wasinifu nature mpendwa wakati unafuata matamanio yako na sio ya Mungu umechiweka waziwazi uogozwe na komanda of unseen world bwana asifiwe biblia inasema by our very nature we were subject to God's anger just like anyone else kwa sababu ya hiyo kutozalika tena tulikuwa tumejiweka bwana asifiwe kwa hasira za bwana when you don't obey god kuna hasira za bwana bwana asifiwe tafadhali ni vizuri kuingia kwa maagano mapya na usijaribu kutoka huko nje ni kubaya bwana asifiwe biblia inasema but god is so rich in mercy that he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life when he raised christ from the dead it is only by god's grace that we have been saved for he raised us from the dead along with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm because we are united with christ jesus kwa huruma za bwana mungu ametuinua ametuokoa ametuurudisha hai na ametukalisha pamoja na kristo mahali pa juu mpendwa maagano tulio nayo hatukai tu hapa duniani ni mili yetu iko hapa duniani lakini tumekalishwa pamoja na Kristo in the heaven area and that is why we are able to overcome sin sababu tumeinuliwa pamoja na Kristo bwana asifiwe tena kusoma hiyo fasi ingine hapo wacha tusome So may you pass even another chapter 35 to God so me. So God can point to us in all future ages as an example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Jesus Christ. Sasa Biblia inasema tukishaingia kwa hii maagano mpya Mungu anaweza kutumia kama example. Ha, imagine Mungu akitutumia kama example ya kuonyesha vile tumekaa na maagano. Ha, matamanio ya Mungu ni ya kutumia kama example watu waonage vile maagano imekufanyia. Ah, hujanielewa na kuambia mapenzi ya Mungu ni kukutumia kama example. Sisi tumetumia example ya Mephibosheth. Vile alifanywa na maagano. Hata sisi Mungu anataka kututumia kama example ya vile maagano hubadilisha mtu wa kawaida ana shida mambo ya ulimwengu mpendwa ah may we fulfill the desire of god by becoming a good example ya kusimamiwa na maagano ya bwana ah yani mungu anasema angalia fulani maisha yetu yenyewe yaokoe mtu akitujua na anajua jamii zetu akituona anajua kuna nguvu ya maagano akiuliza wewe unaishi kwa nini leo anaelewa ni nguvu ya maagano akiuliza kwa nini huku hocheka kama jamii yenu unajua kuna magonjwa yanasemekanaga ni ya jamii 
wanauliza kwa nini hakumalizwa na asima vile amemaliza wenzao kwa familia yao yote wanaelewa ni maagano biblia inasema wakati mmoja ambao daudi maagano inasema usiku mmoja kuna watu ambao walikuwa naongea kuhusu topita walisema kitu kizuri wakasema he has been with jesus bwana asifiwe yani watu wakiuliza kwa nini uko hivyo wanasema unajua yule tu ndiye aliyeokoka kwao unajua yule tu alipenda maisha yake kwa Yesu bwana asifiwe hata watu wenu wakikuona kile kinawatesa hakikutesi you become an example wanakuja kwa kwa nakuuliza our brother our sister our cousin kwa nini wewe maisha yako inaonekana ikuwa mzuri unawaambia I discovered there is a new covenant. Hata wewe ukitaka maisha yako yabadilike, you can come to this covenant. And this covenant will change your life. Bwana asifiwe. So mpendwa, erewa nguvu ya maagano. Wokofu si tu siku ile ulisema nimetubu dhambi zangu. Hapana, wokofu ni maagano ya kutetea mahali ulikuwa uwezi fika, uweze kufika. Katika jina la Yesu. Hebu tusimame beza bwana. Na leo tuna, na leo tunagalia ujube ambao nimeupatia hela